Hello. <laughs> um, my name is Jamie Schmid. Um, I am a community evangelist at SiteLock. Uh, we are a um, website security company based out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I'm also a freelance designer and developer, um, content enthusiast, and a proud cat mama in Portland, Oregon. Um, and this talk is Don't Break Live, using a staging site for updates. Um, and it's actually kind of cool, like some of the talks that came before me because they explained things that like I don't really have to explain anymore. So um, good job in building this session. Um, okay, so first, what is a staging site? Um, we've kind of talked about it throughout the day, people um, referring to staging sites, but officially, it's a copy of your site that you use for testing updates, new features, changing, QA checks, et cetera. Um, and then I say there that it's a private copy because it's not um, a site that is uh, publicly viewable by, you know, with a, a search engine. Um, your customers aren't gonna be able to find it. It's only for your own personal use. Um, and copy is underlined because as much as you possibly can get it to be, it should be a direct duplicate of your existing live site. This is because um, if we're gonna be doing things like making updates, uh, testing new features, doing anything like that, you wanna make sure that you're actually doing it on a version of the site that represents what your live site is. So um, if you do an update that comes out and you think it might break the site, uh, <coughs> Gutenberg. <clears throat> So you would want to do this on a staging site because you probably don't want to do it on live. Um, I highly recommend um, for major um, uh, versions, which 5.0 is a very major version coming out here, definitely make that upgrade on a staging site. Don't do it on live. Um, but that goes for pretty much doing any features or any kind of updates. Um, you shouldn't be doing those on your live site. Um, so you know that you need to keep your site updated um, because WordPress is constantly pushing out security updates um, and plugins and themes are following suit in those updates. Um, uh, there's new features that come out with updates. So you, you know, you wanna keep it up to date. You don't wanna get hacked. Um, but making updates on your live site is very scary. Um, how many people have ever pushed update on a live site and like literally held your breath? to be like, I hope, because I totally, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, because if it breaks on you once, you'll never ever forget that that happened. Um, so you know that that happens. So, um, but how does a staging site work? So how it works is basically easy. There's, you know, um, you make an exact duplicate of your live site. You, you run your updates. You do any kind of the testing you want. Um, go through and like, yes, this is, it's perfect. All good? Okay, so push those changes to your live site. Um, not having to touch live, obviously. But it's not really that easy um, for a number of reasons. One of the reasons was we just, the talk right before this, talking about the URLs. Um, if you're gonna be pushing a site that's on a staging site, maybe it's got a different URL. Um, and if you're gonna be overwriting your live site, there's a lot of um, complex mechanics that go into changing even just the URL. Um, and then updates can include physical files and database changes on top of that. Um, it's not, depending on how technical you are, it's not always evident to you um, if it is just a file change or if it is database and file changes. Um, databases themselves are hard to sync. That's just a, a, a known fact. Um, uh, just so there's a lot of it that's that is not that easy and I'm going to kind of go over a little bit um, what you need to be aware of when you're evaluating your own um, staging site solution because there's not one um, one size fits all solution there's a lot of different ways to do it and none of those ways are exactly perfect for every situation most are not perfect for you know any situation honestly if you ask Developers, um, you know, what is your dev workflow look like? How are you syncing databases? How does your staging, you know, go? They're probably just gonna say, not well. <laughs> but, so, so expect that, okay, it's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna be perfect, but get it to be to as close as what works for you. Um, because ultimately, we're trying to not do things that are gonna break your live site. Um, 
so okay, just getting down to literally what is required to happen, um, you need to make a replica of your existing live site. You need to put it someplace so you can run it as a website, right? Um, and then you need to get those changes that you've made onto your live site somehow. So each of these three things kind of um, represents its own unique problem. And each of these three kind of have um, multiple solutions that you can take to achieve it. So doing the things. First of all, um, the very first step, if you are going to be doing um, a staging site, audit your site. Um, you need to know what's going on on your website. Um, if you don't, this is a perfect time to figure that out. Um, you need to know what plugins are happening on your site, um, what size your site is, if it's gargantuan. Um, do you have any automations that are happening on the site? For example, uh, maybe a plugin that does an automated email alert, and that email alert includes um, a link to your website. Well, if you send it out from the staging site, it could potentially have your staging URL in it. You don't want to do that. So knowing what's, what's going to be happening on your site, you know, when you're in the staging environment, how busy is your live site? If you have a, you know, a, an e-commerce site that is getting, you know, um, one order a minute, congratulations, that's amazing. Um, but you're not going to necessarily be able to copy over your site, work on it on staging for three days, and then throw the whole thing back up there and overwrite your live site because you're going to lose out on orders, you're going to lose out on, you know, potentially comments if you have any A-B testing, like all those kinds of things, like you might not necessarily um, get those sort of results there. Um, are you using version control? If you don't know the answer to that, um, ask your developer. If you don't have a developer, then you're probably not using it because you would know. Um, and then get familiar with your hosting. Um, what company it is, what service level you have, um, and what level of access you have um, to be able to manipulate your files and your um, file settings and your, your website settings. So knowing all those things is very important. And you know, if you're a site owner, um, you should you know, at least be familiar with these things. If you're a developer inheriting a site and you're like, oh my goodness, no, you shouldn't be making all these updates on live. And, Oh, I get that you like to try out new themes, but like, don't just like try them out in the middle of the day for a couple minutes and then change it back, right? Because like, you don't want your, your potential customers to be seeing all this crazy stuff bouncing around. Um, so regardless, you want to get familiar with what your site is. And knowing these things are going to directly inform you um, as to you know, what your decisions for the staging site are going to be. Um, so quickly, what are your options? Um, these are five like pretty basic solutions. Um, there's probably more. Uh, if there are, please uh, t feel free to tell me what you're using because I'm always interested to see what other people are doing. But so going from easiest to not easiest um, would be the hosting one-click staging. Um, that is where you have a host that already has a managed WordPress environment. They've already created um, an automated system for creating a, a staging site for you. They probably have some sort of um, system where you can push a button to deploy. Like all that is amazing. And um, if you're, you know, a person that does not have an advanced developer workflow, and you know that if you, if you do have this, you know it. Um, this is an ideal solution. Finding a host with one-click staging that can do it is the easiest way, but it's not always the uh, most economical. It's a lot of times it's expensive. Um, a lot of times you can't just um, up and move to a new host just because you want to. Maybe your client doesn't. You know, so if you can do it, good. Um, another solution is to use um, a plugin that you can install in WordPress that will um, sort of manage it for you. Um, uh, building your site into a subdomain or subfolder, you can develop it locally on your local computer and then push it out to staging, push it out to live. Um, and I'm not going to talk about advanced developer workflows really at all um, because I think I've only got about 10 minutes left. So, um, so first, I'm just going to a little bit more with the hosting one-click staging. Um, the most expensive, obviously, your host needs to offer it. Um, but I don't know how well you can see this, but this is just an example of WP Engine's one-click staging. Um, so you can see there at the bottom, 
it's got um, a button that says copy from live to staging, and this will um, replicate your site and, and create a staging site for you, like just pushing that button. Um, and then the, the red button, it's red for a reason, um, it says deploy site from staging to live. So when you've made the changes, like this is perfect, it's great, you push the red button, and then it, it overwrites your site. It's red because you wanna you know, make sure that you're ready to overwrite. Um, so this is one example, and, and all the different hosts, they, they kind of have different ways of doing it. Um, and they vary, and, uh, and uh, uh, the, the level of plan that you need with them varies a lot too. So if you're, if you're evaluating hosts right now, and you think you might want to do this kind of solution, look at all the different hosts and kind of you know, see, see how they do it, because everyone kind of does a little bit differently. So some hosts that do it, uh, the engine, flywheel, pressable, callway, site district, Matt from site district is in here, I believe. Um, if you want to see an example demo of push to live, go find Matt. I'm sure he would love to show you. Um, so in a second, use a plugin. There is a plugin called WP Staging. And what it does is um, you enable it in your live site. It creates um, a WordPress staging install inside of your live site in, in um, a subdomain. And um, it duplicates it and you can do everything you want right there in the exact live environment. And then it also has like um, a push to migrate so you can migrate it straight from there. And uh, you can't really see this, but um, it shows you as it's copying the tables over, copying the files over. It even shows you as it's replacing the links, doing that URL replacement. It kind of shows it going through there. And then it gives you um, a little bit of command line if you want to watch that. It's, it's a lot of lines of stuff that it's doing. Um, so then a standalone site, which would be um, a subdomain or a subfolder. This would be, um, you can make changes locally and push to your remote staging. Um, you can just create a subdomain on your live uh, hosting and make the changes there. Um, ensure it's all working and then make those changes again on live. Or you can do some kind of a push to live. So when you're doing it this way, uh, a manual subdomain or subfolder, um, you are going to create this subdomain at the hosting level. Um, you're going to use something that'll duplicate your live site and we'll package it up and then we'll migrate it into your staging site. And then that's pretty much the same thing you have to do when you push from staging to live. So it's more manual, um, but it, it, it's, a, it's a common solution that a lot of people do use. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, solutions for doing that migration, which uh, I'll get to in a second. So another way that you can do it, which I do actually with like some of my clients, is um, just having a local WordPress site. Um, if you're running WordPress locally, which would, you know, on, on your computer, you can make the changes to the local site, ensure it's all working, and then you can push those changes up to the staging site. And like, okay, yes, it's working on staging because you, you, know, you want that same environment. Um, and then as soon as you're like, okay, that's cool, then you can push again to the live site. Um, so like I say push again, like it's just like simple to do. It's actually not simple to do. Um, but depending on what you're using for your WordPress um, local site, um, you might be able to deal with that. So first, what is a local site? It's running on your own computer. It's using software that um, allows your computer to run as a server. Um, and there's a couple of solutions in place for um, dedicated WordPress local development. Desktop server is one. As far as I know, it was the first one to offer some kind of a, um, a, a setup like this. And it uses um, an instance of Zamplite, um, but it's specifically set up to create a WordPress site. So you go in there, you, you start it up on your computer, um, you say, create a new WordPress site. It's like, okay. It spins up a WordPress site. You can do your local development there. It's pretty cool. Um, local by Flywheel is very similar. Um, if you have a more um, advanced sort of development workflow, Flywheel does, a, does more of that advanced kind of stuff. Um, OK, so replacing, migrating, and syncing the changes. Um, replicate, perform the same changes you did to live. Migrate, an automated process that overwrites database files or content, and then syncing, more advanced, 
It needs to check for changes on both sides and then resolve them together. How am I doing for time? Am I? Okay. So, um, so there's plugins for migrating. There's plugins for syncing. I'm sorry, I have to go a little bit quickly here. Um, but a recipe for success is make a schedule for doing updates. Use a service to track updates, like Manage WP. Make all your updates on staging first, and then never break live again. Thank you. <laughs> so um, if you have questions about it, this is a very uh, involved topic. Please find me after this or at the after party, or tweet me out, Twitter out to me, at um, Jamie Schmid. And I also have um, a, a blog post that I've written that go far more in depth. Um, and you can find my slides online. And I'm also going to tweet links out to those slides also. So check me out on Twitter if you want to see them. Thank you.